it's going to probably sound like a broken record for you, just for, that, for what Mrs. Ellis said. Okay, um, uh, my speech is entitled, One Good Deed Leads to Another Good Deed. When Bob Love founded Northwood School of the Liberal Arts in 1993, he carefully created the seven simple rules. The first is respect and courage, which, if followed, makes the last six rules easier to obey for all of the other rules are forms of respect. During my time at Northfield, I have tried to follow the several simple rules to the best of my abilities. At times, the rules were easier to follow than at other times. I believe that I have failed the first rule most often. I can remember many times that I have insulted or torn down my friends and fellow students just to make me feel better. I did this because I was insecure, but now I'm trying with a more concerted effort to overcome this and to become more of a leader. I believe that part of why the North York student is expected to respect elders, friends, and others' need is that when we show respect, something good happens. In the book, The Giver, by Lewis Lowry, Jonas, the main character, lives in a seemingly idyllic society where pain, hunger, fear, and anger have been eliminated. At a glance, this society seems perfect, but upon further inspection, one can see that the people are not experiencing true joy and sorrow, but instead are existing by going through monotonous daily ex exercises that have little meaning to them. When Jonas turns 12, at the ceremony of 12, he is assigned the job of receiver of memory, the person who keeps for the whole culture the experiences and memories of real joy and sadness. Ultimately, Jonas ends up fleeing the village, and in doing so, he releases all the memories back into the community, and by doing this, he knows that the community will awaken and once again experience joy and find purpose in life. Mm. Unfortunately, the book ends with Jonas' escape, and readers are left to speculate on what happens in the community when those emotions return. Before Jonas becomes the receiver of memory, he helps out at the House of the Old by talking to the elderly people who do not work anymore. Jonas becomes friends with one of the elderly ladies named Larissa. Jonas shows his respect to Larissa by talking to her. During these talks, Jonas asks Larissa about what she did that day and what she wants to do the next day. Larissa enjoys her conversations with Jonas. Larry writes that during one of their chats, Larissa, quote, opened her eyes happily, end quote. When Jonas respects Larissa by talking with her, he makes something good happen making Larissa feel a small taste of happiness since the people cannot technically feel real or true joy is good work on Jonas's part. Just as Jonas made Larissa happy, Northfield made someone else happy. This year, the high school mix ensemble and orchestra performed at a retirement home. At this specific retirement home was a friend of Miss Heavington and her mother, Ernie Clark, who was a World War II veteran who liked to tell stories of when he was a mechanic and a test pilot in a bar. The choir and orchestra performed to the assembled group and afterwards they listened to and talked with Ernie about his life and adventures. He told us the reason he wanted to be a pilot in the war was because he would rather, quote, fly planes than dig foxholes, end quote. And that he would rather be, quote, flying with the eagles than being down on the ground with the turkeys, end quote. <laughs> He never actually flew bombing missions during the war because the United States dropped the atomic bomb before he transferred over. Instead, he told us how he used his flying skills to save people's lives by flying them from small towns to a bigger city with a big hospital. While Ernie was retelling his stories, I could see his face light up with the fond memories. I could tell he was happy. As we said goodbye, Ernie had a warm smile on his face as he enthusiastically shook each of our hands. Looking back on this small moment, I realized that Northfield performed a small act of kindness for Ernie. By our singing and talking to him, we got to know him and become his friend. We gave him a moment to enjoy. Just as Lewis's eyes showed happiness, Northfield also made Ernie Club's face light up. That is what respect can do. A Northfield student is also expected to respect friends. One way a friend can respect a friend is by respecting his privacy. The story of To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee follows the tale of two children, Scout and Jim, and their father, Atticus, who live in Macomb, Alabama. The Radleys are one of their neighbors. In all of Macomb County's history, no one had ever been seen to go inside the Radleys' house, except Mr. Radley and his eldest son, Nathan. Everyone in Macomb had heard about how Mr. Radley had another son who had never been seen, and so the children and the adults gave him the name of Boo. 
People make assumptions about what the Radleys do inside the house and what Radley and what Boo Radley is. All the kids thought he was, quote, a malevolent phantom, end quote, that he would eat you if he saw you. <laughs> Nearly everyone in town generally believed these rumors and suspicions. Atticus was not among this group, that group. When they repeat a rumor about, a rumor about Boo, Atticus tells them to, quote, mind their own business and let the Radleys mind theirs. And that the Radleys had a, quote, right to their own privacy, end quote. Throughout the book, Atticus defends the Radley, specifically Boo Radley, and tries to teach Scout and Jem that he's not a monster, but a good person. One cold night, when a fire engulfs Miss Marty's house and Scout stands outside, <coughs> fixated by the flames, she does not notice when someone covers her shoulders with a blanket. Atticus makes a point of telling her that it was Boo who did that for her. Jem and Scout come to see Boo Radley as a good person through his actions and from Atticus' example of respecting him always. Imagine a teacher handing back a test at Northfield. Johnny asks Mary what score she got. Mary refuses to tell him. Johnny then leaps to the conclusion that Mary must have received a bad grade and is too embarrassed to tell anyone. Otherwise, she would have shown him her grade. Johnny goes on to tell all the other kids that Mary failed the test, which shows that she is dumb. Mary becomes upset, and this results in crying or getting mad and giving Johnny a black eye and a busted lip. <laughs> Johnny's ill-informed conclusion of Mary's test grade came as a result of his lack of respect for her privacy, which led to a mess that resulted in a bang of Johnny and a frustrated Mary, both receiving a meeting with the principal. Now, reverse this scenario. Johnny respects Mary's privacy in not revealing her grade. Mary tells her other friends that she got an A, and they in turn tell Johnny, who upon hearing this goes and congratulates Mary. A Northfield student should not assume the worst case scenario when a friend of his did not tell them something to them. Just as Atticus respected Boo Radley's privacy, a Northfield student is expected to respect his friend's privacy, and by doing so, something good happens. Besides respect for elders and friends, a Northfield student is expected to use his abilities to help others instead of tearing them down. An example of someone who uses his talents his talents to help others can be seen in the story Beowulf. Mm -hmm. Beowulf is a geek king who helps the Danes. What makes Beowulf a great king and a great friend is that he has tremendous strength. In the land of the Danes lives a terrible hideous beast named Grendel. He starts to prey on the people of King Rothgar's court. Many of his greatest warriors are killed by Grendel and so the rest of the warriors hide in the king's castle. Beowulf hears of this and sails to King Rothgar's to King Rothgar and the Danes with his most trusted geek warriors. Beowulf fights and eventually kills Grendel by ripping off one of his giant arms by brute strength. Grendel is strong, but Beowulf is stronger. King Rothgar thanks Beowulf and they celebrate. Soon, Grendel's mother takes revenge for her son by killing one of the Danes. Beowulf then goes to a lair underneath the water and beheads her. He brings back Grendel's mother's head along with the legendary sword. Again, Rothgar thanks Beowulf. At this point, Beowulf has two options. Leave Rothgar and go home, or stay and claim kingdom by the slaying of Grendel and his mother. Beowulf could have imposed his might upon the Danes because he had proven to be the best warrior, but he decided not to use his abilities for this. He used his talents to help the Danes, and now he can go back home. At Northfield, Coach Fair helps the weaker players become better. Coach helped me during my 7th, 8th, and 9th grade summers improve my basketball skills. I shot countless free throws. I ran a full court dribble drill designed to make one bring the ball all the way up the court and then score. I worked on doing a pump fake before a pull-up jump shot. As a result of his teaching me through these drills, I was able to contribute more to the team during practices and games during the school year. Now reverse this scenario. Imagine if Coach did not help me improve my game, but instead insulted me and showed off his athleticism and talent while watching me continue to struggle and make the same mistakes. As a result, I would not have developed the skills necessary for me to help my team out. Or consider Noah Trammell, who excels in choir, who teaches church hymns to the three and four year olds at his church. Again, reverse the scenario. Noah does not help the kids, but discourages them and allows them to be rowdy and does not teach them. Or consider Lydia, who does well in chemistry, who decided to help me study for tests last year when I struggled. As a result, we both got better grades and had a better understanding of chemistry. 
A North Rift student who shows his respect to his friends by helping them results in their friends' lives being improved, just as Bale, Coach Bale, Noah, and Lydia has improved other people's lives. I try to emulate Jonas when he speaks with, with Larissa. I am trying to follow in Atticus's footsteps and his respect for Blue Radley. I want to use my gifts to build up others, just as Beowulf did with the Danes. I want to be a guide to others, just as Noah was with the younger kids. I hope to be like Lydia and help someone in need. I hope everyone at North Rift can respect others. The first rule of our school is related to the golden rule, which I learned when I was young and which has always been in my mind. Treat others as you would want to be treated. This ties in perfectly because if we follow the respect and encourage rule, then we are also following the golden rule and others will respect us and encourage us. 